Um, cool. So hi everyone, and um, can I just ask if I'm sharing the right screen first? Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I know. <okay. laughs> I have been practicing. Okay. So hi everyone, and um, thank you for joining me again today at this lunch and learn. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Marie, and I currently work as a principal test automation engineer at Miss UK. I also blog about um, testing and test automation at mariedrake.com and for anyone who wishes to follow me on Twitter or ask me any um, sort of like any questions, I have my Twitter handle added here as well. Um, so in this session, we'll look at the benefits of using Cypress to test our APIs. We'll do a quick demo on how we can write our first API test and then we'll have time to do questions and answers at the end. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick um, recap on what we did on our first Cypress session. So for anyone who has missed it, we talked about why Cypress is a great tool for end-to-end -end automated testing and why it's proven to be popular among the JavaScript community. Um, we then wrote our first Cypress test where we automated adding a to-do item on an example app. I've added the uh, GitHub repo here if anyone wants to um, clone it or play around with it. The uh, link is here. It's, it's a public repo as well, so everyone should be able to access it. Cool. Um, so this is just, um, again, another recap of what we did. So um, you could see here that we have a first test where we added a new to-do item successfully on our app. Uh, we made use of uh, multiple Cypress commands such as sci.visit to visit our root uh, base URL that is stored in our config file. We then get our new to do, which um, in here, um, Cypress has a feature called aliases. So the advantage of this is, is, it, is that if you need to access this selector um, multiple times, you can just alias this and then reference this back onto your test. So you could see here on lines eight to nine that I've referenced this alias and then we're just typing our to-do items. Um, the next couple of lines, just the assertions that we've done. So we're saying here that after we've typed our to-do items, our to-do list should then have a length of two. And this is just an extra one that I've added after which showcase how we can use a custom command. Um, so this is just a custom command to get the first to-do item on our list, and it should be equal to the first one that we've added in. A quick review again of the Cypress test runner. So you could see here visually that every time we um, hover or click on any of the actions on the left-hand side, the um, Cypress test runner will visually replay our application state. So this is very useful for debugging. Cool. Now, let's talk about API testing. So as test, as, as test automation engineers, we often write two set of tests. There's the UI test and there's the API test. The API tests are normally run on the command line and browser tests are run within a UI. Now, normally, we have different tools for these two types of testing. And from my personal experience, every time we have a project where we have to do both UI, and API testing, we always use separate tools. So there are so many um, tools out there in the market to help us with API testing. Probably the most popular, in my opinion, is uh, Postman, since we can play with the requests um, graphically. Um, if you need to run your Postman test on a CI pipeline, for example, you will need to use um, Newman, which is their test runner equivalent. Um, just other JavaScript testing framework that are popular include SuperTest and Chai HTTP. And then on the Java world, we have Rest Assured and Karate, just to name a few. So what if I tell you that we can use the same tool for UI testing and to test our APIs? That we can add a visual test runner for our API tests and also run it um, headlessly on the command line. Now, here comes Cypress again to the rescue. Um, so we've seen on the first session, what are the different advantages of using Cypress? Now in this session, I'll show you some advantages of using Cypress to test your APIs. 
So first and foremost, what's great with Cypress is that it has built-in support for making requests to our servers. Because we have access to the test runner, this makes it easy to debug our API tests. We don't need to write any more console log statements just to make sure that we are um, returning the data that we want, for example. <clears throat> can always revisit the state of our APIs, and we also have access to dev tools, which can contain more information that could be helpful for our tests. The skills are also easily transferable since we are only using one tool. So the context switching is um, set to minimal. And um, I think this is more important as well that since um, we're using one tool for both API and um, UI testing. We also have more buy-in to get developers involved with API testing, since using Cypress for front-end testing is very popular in the development community. Cool, so this is um, just a snippet of the command that we're going to use today. So by default, sci.request equates to doing a get request. So you could see here that if you don't pass in um, the method, then by default, it's doing the get request. This is very flexi um, flexible and it supports all the HTTP actions such as uh, post, um, delete, or put. There's different variations as you can see here of the side that requests, which I'll demo later. So just um, a first look at our API test. So you could see here that similar to our um, first application where we have a to-do app, in this example now we're testing our to-do API. So um, my test is just asserting that it returns adjacent data. So first what we do is we make a get request to the to-do's API endpoint. So again, by default, since we haven't, um, um, specify the action. This is doing the get request. And then we're saying um, that after we've done the request, we want to check its headers. And then on the header, we want to check its content type and then assert that it should return um, a JSON data. So it should include the application uh, JSON string. Now let's um, look at more examples. Um, again, for anyone who wishes to uh, play around with the repo or, you know, just add more examples to it, um, I've also added the link to the public repo here. Um, I'm just going to switch to my other screen. Oh, okay. So just um, in terms of the structure, this is just the standard Cypress um, scaffolding that Cypress provides when you install it for the first time. The only difference that I've added here is our base URL. Um, rather than our um, front end to do app, this is now the JSON placeholder that typeco.com. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with this um, API, it's just a fake um, JSON API server that uh, returns um, a set of data. So it has different um, resources, we could get um, fake data for um, users, fake data for to-dos, um, and so on. Um, I'll explain this environment variable here uh, here later, but uh, first let's just open our Cypress test integration and we'll look at doing the to-dos.spec. I'm just going to comment out <laughs> all these tests that I forgot to do before this. And then we'll, I'll just um, walk you through all the different examples. Okay. Cool. So um, we've, we've seen on the previous slide that this is our first um, API test example. Now, if we want to um, load the visual test runner, I'm just going to run npx Cypress open. Uh, let me just show you my terminal as well so you can see it. Can hear my daughter coming. Um, 
So let me just install all the project dependencies because I'm um I'm using a different laptop here. But um basically on my package.json, I've installed Cypress and there is a plugin that I'm going to showcase as well later, but this is an external plugin created by Gleb um, Bamutov, which is the uh, B, uh, Vice President of Engineering of Cyprus. So I'll show you how um, we can make use of this plugin as well when we do our tests. Just bear with me while this gets installed. Um, what I've done here as well that I haven't done in the first session is I've um, specifically added two different commands here on our package.json. One for um, running the test headlessly and one for opening yeah. the test runner. So um, what, what I'll actually do is I'll make use of this um, custom commands that I've added and then I'll show you that. Mm -hmm. So um, I can be a test runner with this command. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Session time. Meet up there. Caught on some dulka. So now that it's finished um, installing all our test dependency, I'm just going to go ahead and run the um, site open, which should open up our test runner. So you could see while we're writing the tests, um, we also have a visual um, test runner that we can um, inspect. in my other desktop. Cool. Um, so you could see here that it loaded all our different tests. Um, just going to save this so it runs the two tests that we have here. Um, and what's great is that um, if I click this one spec file, so um, you'll see something different here that um, when it first loads, it automatically opens our um, console as well. So um, the good thing about this um, test runner is that you could have um, some events that you can listen to so that before you open the test runner, you could load um, the DevTools console as well. Um, this is quite uh, useful so that when you open the test runner, you don't have to right click and click inspect so that it should always automatically load um, the dev tool. So um, this is very helpful for debugging. Now, if I click on my um, first test, so since this is not a site.visit, we're not seeing our test URL. Um, and this is why I've loaded my dev tools um, automatically in the console because all the actions is that we, we will see it on the console um, instead of this test runner. So if we see here, we're doing the request and you can see here that when I click on this command that the 
um, console has reported some additional logs, which is helpful for uh, debugging. And again, if I click on this header, um, it will say that it's yielded this data. And again, content type, it's yielded the application uh, JSON. So um, similarly, when we looked at the correct um, status code, um, if we look at the requests, so it has a property called um, status. So when we write our Cypress test, you could just easily um, query whatever um, object you can see on the request as long as it's there. So in here, we're saying that after we request to do, we want to get its um, status. And then we're just doing a simple assertion here that it should be equal um, to 200. So you can see here that our test pass. It's a question on the console. Yeah. How to get the console to open up like that yeah. automatically? Is that a command or is that just by default on API tests? No, so it's a command that I've added. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly open this plugins.index. Um, so what plugins index does is um, I've, I've added a command here. So this is um, a command that Cypress uses to listen to some events. So in here, I pass in the event before browser launch. So what it's trying to do is that um, it's going to listen to this event. And if the browser.name is set to Chrome, so there is a um, command on the Chrome API that we can use and it's called auto of um, open dev tools for tabs. Now, when we um, push this and if the um, Cypress test runner identifies that we're using the Chrome browser, then um, it will open up the dev tools for us automatically. Um, we could also expand this so that if we're using the um, other um, Chrome variants like Electron, um, we could also load this, um, load the uh, console, but for this example, I just left it as uh, as pro. Thank you. Cool. Um, so let's go back to our um, third test. So what if we want to load um, a to do from a specific user ID? So what I'll do actually is I'm just going to open the um, the um, Jason, um, the um, API, so you have um, familiarity of the API that we're trying to test. Just going to go back to my Cypress.json and then just copy this link here. Cool. Um, so this is just a simple um, array of objects that returns um, different to-dos for a specific user ID. So each um, object uh, returns user ID, the ID of the to-do, the title, and if it's been completed. So what I want to test is that if I query um, to-dos and I just want to get all the different to-do from user ID one, then it should return all the different to-do items just for this user. To achieve that with Cypress, so um, it's, it's, it's very similar. The only difference is that we're doing um, like a promise base here instead. So in here, we want to make a request on to-do's um, question mark user ID um, equals one. If that request is then finished, we want to inspect its response. Um, and if you're um, quite familiar with JavaScript, we're just saying here that for each of the different items on our response, so this is um, a, a built-in like JavaScript um, method that we can use to iterate on our array. So we're saying here that for each of the item, we're expecting item dot user ID to equal one. So you you can see here that on um, on the first two tests I'm using the should assertion, and on this uh, third test I'm using the expect assertion. So um, Cypress is built on top of Chai, so you could use all their different Chai assertions um, like automatically. Um, you you don't have to install any um, extra plugins as well. This just works um, automatically. Um, 
and then for this next test, so what I want to achieve now is um, I want to get the first to-do item. So I'm just going to type one here. And let's say I've um, completed this to-do item. So I want to set this to um, do. So we could use the um, patch request to update our to-do item. So there's um, a couple of ways to do it. That's why I've added uh, two tests here, which are, which are quite similar, because I just want to showcase that there's different ways of doing the request in Cypress. Now for the first test, it's quite similar on um, the first t-test, but this time we're, um, we're um, specifying that the method of HTTP request that we want is a patch. So this is a patch request and we want to do a patch on this API endpoint. And then here, because we're saying that it's a patch, we need to provide some um, like some uh, data for our request. So in here, I'm just saying that I want the completed um, property to be set to true. Now, um, if I save this, you can see as well that our test automatically gets um, rerun. So if I click this third test, oh, this is not the, this is the test, yeah. So again, if I click on this request, we can see that the logs have been um, printed out and it, 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 and it looks like it has passed because it returns status 200. And if we um, inspect here, the completed object is now set to two. Um, the other way of doing it, uh, if I just go back to my code, is if we just pass um, an entire object. So um, as opposed to this request, we're, we're passing in um, p different um, data on our request. In here, we're just passing in one object. But um, for us to use this, we have to specify um, what the method is. So in this case, our method is a patch. Um, the URL, and in this case, um, we're sending in a body. So in our body, um, it's completely exactly similar. We're also setting that the completed value is set to true. And then similarly, on this test, we're just asserting that um, the completed uh, property should be equal to true. So if I save this, let's go back. Cool. So you could see that our test has passed as well. And it's like pretty much the exact same thing as this test, but um, in 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 this case, we um, did a different way of doing the request. Um, just gonna quickly plug my laptop. It's dying. Cool. Um, so I mentioned a while ago that um, there's a plugin that I want to. Um, like showcase because even though we could see here that our console um, is getting loaded automatically, um, I guess for some it would still be ideal if we can see some visuals on the um, test runner. So this is where um, this plugin by Gleb called Sci API will be handy. Um, so in in Cypress world, for us to in um, to make use of any external plugins we need to be able to um, import this plugin so that we have access to um, the different uh, methods that this API will uh, make use of. So to import a plugin, um, Cypress has a built-in um, file for the um, different plugins that we can import. So if we just click on index.js, you could see here that all I've done is import the um, plugin um, and um, any sort of details on how to import this plugin will always be added on the uh, GitHub repo. So um, all you need to do is just copy and paste it in your index.js. And then now, if I just go back to this post.spec, um, rather than doing sci.request, I replace it with sci.api, but then the format of the way we've written our test is exactly the same as doing a request. So if we look at this first test, we just want to load all the posts successfully. So, so again, rather than doing sci.request, I'm doing sci.api. And this way, I'm just doing the 
um, addition, the, um, the other way of proving the request where I'm passing in the URL, but not the HTTP request. So this again by default is a get request. And then in here, we're just asserting that the status is set to 200 and the body length is set to 100. Now to demo this, I'm just going to go back to my Cypress test runner, stop this, go back to post.spec. I'm just gonna close um, the DevTools console, but you could you can see here that um, the request that we're doing is getting printed out, um, and it's it's just it's it's just really handy. So at least you don't have to open your DevTools console, or you, you don't even have to open like a Postman or like a separate browser just to see the um, just to see the data of the API that you're um, returning. So on, on this example, if I click um, the first test, um, if you hover on any of this command, so in here you could see that, okay, we're doing a um, get request to post, and then if I hover on this, it automatically loads all the data that we need on um, this side. So you could see here as well that it returns a status of uh, 200 and it, loaded, and it loaded the data um, in just uh, 31 milliseconds. So this is just really handy. Um, all the data that we need is here. So if we look at what our second test looks like, um, we're just saying here that it knows the correct amount of posts uh, per, um, per user. So again, I'm just um, um, appending the user ID equals one, similar to um, the to do that spec that we saw a while ago. And we're just asserting that its body should have length of 10. So again, if we click this test and um, hover or click on this response, we can see here that we only have um, 10 uh, posts per user. Cool. So I demoed how to do the get request and the patch request, but I haven't um, showed you how to do the other um, HTTP actions like post or delete. So um, it's quite um, simple, but again, depending on the API that you're like trying to test, if it has any sort of like authentication involved, then you need to um, handle that. But in this example, um, on this JSON um, fake holder API, there's no authentication involved and the um, data is not really persisted. So I'm just going to like show you how easy it, how easy it, it, um, it is in Cypress to do a post or delete request. So again, um, we're using the um, object way where, where we're just passing in one object in the side that API uh, method. Um, in here, we're saying that we're doing a post because we want to add a new um, post and the URL that we want to um, add extra posts in and the body. So in the body, we're just saying that, okay, um, this post belongs to user ID one. Um, the title and the body should be set to um, this value. And then in here, so if, um, if um, the post has been added in successfully, we want the response status to equal to 201. And then the, um, the um, post ID will become like 101 or whatever. So if we load this on our Cypress test runner here, so you could see here, um, what the expected response is. So um, the response code is 201 and then it returns um, this ID 101, which um, I've just asserted in, in our test. Um, mind you that when you're using this JSON uh, placeholder, if you make a get request on um, this post ID 101, the data will not persist. So this is just for demo purposes. So um, any data that you do with JSON placeholder doesn't get um, retained um, on any of their database. So this is just all, um, all fake. Um, and then on the last test, so if you want to delete no a post, again, similarly, instead of um, doing a get or post, I'm just saying that my method will be delete and the um, post that I, want, uh, that I want to delete, which is one. And it should just be equal um, to 200 because I don't think the API returns anything um, other than that.
So you could see here that there's no data um, return, but then the um, status code is set to 200, which meant that our delete request was successful. Um, next one that I want to um, demo is I just want to show you um, how we're currently um, using this on our um, on our um, current workplace. So um, recently, I've been tasked to um, create a setup smoke test because we've recently just enabled um, some um, redis caching on our test articles. And this is where it's really helpful because um, we could just create um, some smoke tests for um, checking that, you know, like all these headers um, have these different values and, and it would give us um, some level of confidence that every time we deploy to a test environment, when these tests are run, and if there are no issues, then we are quite um, safe to do uh, deploy to production. So um, I just want to demo that um, rather than hard coding like any sort of like test articles, um, there's there's a cypress.json file where we stored our base um, URL, and we could also store some environment variables. So this is quite helpful if you have different um, tests, tests um, test config for different test environments. So in this example, I've set my test article to be this like long URL string. So every time we make a request to that um, test article, again, we're just um, concentrating on getting its response and we just want to assert that all the different header um, like properties such as the X rendered from, it should contain Redis and it should be um, served by Helios. So this is a real um, example that we, that we are currently um, planning to use to add to our smoke tests in our current project. Um, and the last one that I want to demo, so if I look at the users here, so um, imagine that you only really have um, one sort of endpoint. So um, a good way to group your tests is, you know, by different endpoints. So in this example, um, I made use of the before each command just to clean up um, our code a bit. So I don't need to um, like keep, um, so, so that I don't need to keep calling side, side that requests um, duplicately on my test. And um, by using alias, like, um, how we've seen on the first section um, on the first session in this case I'm just saying that I want to alias the um, request to slash users as users so that I can then use it um, for my tests so you could see here that rather than doing side that request I'm just doing side dot get and then append the alias uh, users and um, we're just doing like the um, the um, um, assertions as 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 uh, usual. Um, this is quite handy because it makes it more like um, easier to like um, structure. Because if the request endpoint you know has changed, all um, all all you need to do is just update um, this endpoint here. So I'm just gonna quickly demo um, how that test is run. So, users. Yeah, the money is busy. Yeah. Um. Oh. So, if I just open one test, you could see here as well that the get request is being alias as users. And in here, we're, we're just saying that when we found the alias for the users, we want to get its headers, its content type, and we're just saying that it should be um, expected value should be application uh, JSON. So this is just the exact same um, test format that we've done on the previous um, test already. It's pretty, um, mommy. Yeah, okay. Um, so in terms of... Um, um, additional tests. Um, I've just basically showcased um, how to you know do a get request, how to do a post, um, delete, um, even you know patch. So um, I you know um, I just suggest um, just just you know um, try it, play you know play around with it, and ask your developers as well to check out Cypress to you know help you with API testing. Um, if I'm just gonna go back quickly to my slides. 
Um, if you need any sort of like additional um, resources, um, again, I highly recommend visiting the Cypress um, documentation. They have a really good documentation about doing different requests. They also have different um, examples or even like complex like examples. So if you have like single sign-on, um, if you have like JWT tokens that you need to add into your, um, into your request, you could um, add those easily in Cypress. Um, this is just a blog post um, again from Cypress where they introduce um, adding, you know, like the Cypress support to do your end to end API tests. So if you need any sort of like further um, reading, um, then yep, I, I highly recommend uh, these two um, resources. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it in terms of the, um, in terms of the demo itself. Um, I think I pretty much um, demoed all the different tests. I also showed how you could um, use um, this event where before um, launching the browser, you can um, launch it with the dev tools um, open as well. So it's very helpful for debugging. Um, we've looked at how we could import um, the site API command. So we have um, access to, you know, just like showing all the different requests and response um, in our test runner if you don't want to um, launch the dev tool. So it's quite handy. And uh, we also showed you like a real example on how we're currently uh, doing Cypress to test our um, different um, endpoints. And with that, are there any uh, questions? You mentioned you had all of these on in your repo as well for us to look at. Can you share that link again? Maybe share it in the chat. Uh, yep. Let me just um, open my bit. Uh, yep. Um, cool. Thank yeah. you. Is there a URL to recording of last presentation? Yeah, we have it um, recorded. Um, the first, um, uh, the first um, presentation, but um, I'm actually hosting another uh, meetup this coming Thursday, which I'll be doing an introduction to Cypress again. So if you want to attend that, um, let me know when I can get you um, in contact with the organizer. Oh, video. <laughs> Yeah, the key, like, yeah, it, it, it was my kid, sorry. <laughs> Do you um, plan? Hi. Yeah. Um, how easy is this to integrate this with Cucumber? Um, so Cucumber is just um, a separate plugin that you can in install with Cypress. Um, if you go to their official um, documentation, uh, there is a um, there is a plugins documentation there, and it will like show you how to integrate with Cucumber. Um, once you have that that uh, plugin installed, then it's just you know the same. So you'll have like a feature file, and then um, each like feature file will have like a step definition. So for example, if I um, if I look at this post that spec then instead of doing, you know, describe or it, you have like the given when and then. So, um, yeah, it's, it's quite easy to integrate. Um, are there any more um, questions? Um, thanks a lot for your great presentation. Could you um, uh, show us um, what it looks like when the um, uh, result is wrong? So when the um, expected and the actual uh, values are different and uh, what does it look like specifically for um, complex uh, objects, maybe not just simple string uh, comparison, but uh, would you recommend um, testing complex objects um, also through uh, this tool or would you rather test uh, single um, items uh, within the object. Uh, so I guess that completely depends on your um, testing, I guess, like strategy. 
So I know that um, if you want to test, you know, like complex objects, you could do like schema testing, or you could also do like contract um, testing. But that's like a different approach. But um, I guess this this is just to showcase that if you're using like a separate tool for your API. So for example, in like JavaScript, if you're using um, you know, like a different framework like um, super tests or you know chai HTTP. Um, the context um, switching might be difficult. So if you just want to stick with one tool, then this might be an option for you. Um, with regards to the first question of like showing um like error, uh, showing like error examples. So if um, Gabby, please. Um, so if I go to research um the examples here are, are quite simple so i'm just trying to look at okay so in here let's say rather than um asserting id i accidentally type um, post id and then if we run this test in Cypress again. So, because we tried to, um, like, um, expect that, um, oh, sorry, that expect that something that doesn't um, exist in our um, property, so this is saying that it's undefined, um, you'll be able to see here as well that the assertion error is, um, is you know, saying that it's expecting something that's undefined, and if we view, again, the stack, the um, stack trace, there's some additional um, logs here that you could know um, look so in terms of error uh, messages uh, you could also see it in the test runner um, itself so um, it's you know it's it's just uh, useful for like debugging you know, um, purposes um, I actually have um, another session where um, I'm planning to do some mocking on the different um, like HTTP requests so if that's something you know of of um, interest because um, if you don't want to um, make a um, an actual get request to the real um, API endpoint, um, Cypress has a way to basically um, intercept this different request, and you could like be flexible and return um, the type of data that you want. Thank you very much. Again, it depends. It depends on um, how um, how strict your authentication is. Um, I can um, recommend going to the Cypress example because they basically have examples of doing authentication um, using single sign-on. Um, using JWT tokens, um, so have a look. Um, we've managed to um, automate the authentication um, to our tests. Um, sorry, my kid is very distracting at me. Um, but if 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 you want me to um, basically um, have like a separate repo just to do a demo for the authentication, I'll be happy um, to do that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to add the um, meetup group here for um, Thursday. Um, I'm just going to find um, what the meetup URL URL link 
and you could just sign up from there if you're interested to attend um, some introductory session um, about Cyprus. Cool. Um, I'm sorry if my audio is a bit off at the moment because my um, little one just wanted to join, but um, hopefully next next time it's more quiet. Um, and on the next session, we'll be doing uh, visual testing. So if, again, if this is of um, interest, um, then yeah, please do attend um, where I'll be doing a session on how to integrate Cypress with um, Apply Tools, which is, um, a, which is an AI uh, visual um, testing tool. Awesome. Good stuff. Well, yeah, thanks very much, Marie, uh, for leading that. And uh, thanks for bringing the special guest, your, your daughter, as well. Um, really, really great session. Um, I want to give a shout out to all the guys that attended as well. I think we hit over 60 participants at, at some point. Um, so really, really successful. Um, yeah, of course, we are going to be running these every two weeks. So um, definitely pay attention to the tactful page and hopefully... We'll see you at future events as well. Thanks very much, guys. All right, thank you. Cheers, guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming along. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.